Hi guys, they were taking a look at the latest smart tech from a company called Broadlink. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So Broadlink have introduced a no neutral light switch. So there's two different variants of this. I'll show both of them. Together with that, they've got a smart button and motion sensor. Now, one of the significant things about a smart light switch, most of the Wi-Fi ones require a neutral wire. And in the UK, that's an issue because a lot of circuits don't have the neutral wire. So this overcomes that problem. So I'll show what you get in the packaging with these, set it up and show it in action so you can see for yourself how it performs. I've laid out everything you get in the packaging and just to mention they all come with instruction manuals. Looking at the no neutral light switches, so there's two variants on this. So this is the tactile version. You can hear has a clicky sound to it. And then the other one is the glass finish. So this can be wiped clean. On the back, you can see the connections available and there you have it on this one. This has two buttons. So you've got a live in and two switched lives. And on this one, you've got a live in and one switched live. Only because this is only the one button version. There's a two button version and three button also available. Build seems okay, strong plastic all the way around on there. The box is quite chunky. It's about two and a half centimeters deep. So you need a deep back box for this. The tactile version comes with a metal back plate on there to screw in first. And the glass version, if I remove the backing, you can see it's just a plasticky finish in there, some connectors to connect onto the back of this. Each of the light switches comes with two screws and a capacitor. Now this capacitor is used in a situation where if you fit the light switch and you were getting flickering from the light, you'd fit that capacitor in the lighting circuit. You don't have to fit it, but it's just for the situation if you have the flickering. The motion sensor is quite large, so six centimeters by 10 and a half. You can see for yourself and it has mounting fixtures with it as well. The smart button has an all plasticky feel to it. Button click feels good looking at the back takes three triple a batteries and it comes with a set of batteries as well which is good there's also a wall mount for it as well so if you put it into position there you go it just stays in and if you want to take it off you just pull it up and it comes away so you can screw this on and you get some sticky pads if you wanted to use that instead you also get a number of stickers to place over the buttons if you wanted to give an indication of what each button did you also get a small hub, very compact in size and connections wise, it's just a power and reset on this. You get a short cable, which is USB-A to micro USB. And this device is required to have these devices connecting onto your network. The hub uses Broadlink's Fastcon technology, so the devices won't work on a Zigbee or Z-Wave hub. So let's make a start at setting this up. So at my Android phone, the app per after is Broadlink. You can see it there, I've already got it installed. Once you've installed it, you'll be asked to sign up with an account. And if we open up, this is what you're initially presented with. I've got some additional items down below, as you can see. Let's begin by adding in the hub. Plugging the power in. You can see a blue LED flashing away. Click on the plus, add device. Next to that, it's asking to select the Wi-Fi hotspot that's been created by the device. So okay to that. There it is there, done. It's connected with our internet. If I flip over to the app, your phone is connected to the device, continue to that. Next, select our Wi-Fi. Password's already cached as I've already used the app before, so I'll connect to Wi-Fi. It's found a device, let's add it to a room. We'll just leave it as smart hub. So there you go, it's added in now. So let's select use device now. So this is what you presented as the interface for the hub. Clicking on the three dots, basic details here. Obviously you can change the name, location, device info on there, and you can update the firmware from here. Looking at the bottom, you can delete the device from there too. Back from there, saying no accessory, please tap plus on the home page and choose scan QR code to scan the code on accessory to add it. Let's add in the smart button. So I've added the batteries onto the device. If I now click on plus, scan QR code, and we just need to scan in the QR code here in the corner. The scan was successful, confirm to add. Please select a gateway. Smart hub's just here, so let's select that. Okay to that. Where is your device? Select loft. Name it, I'll leave it as smart button. Save to that. You can name each of the buttons here. So I'll click save, just leave it as default. Now it's just highlighting that the hub has to be on for this sub device to work. So I'll click, I know it, done and use device now. The device is currently not paired with gateway 
And to put it in the pairing mode, just hold on to the button here at the side. And there you go, it's flashing away. So the device has been reset. And there we have it, simple as that to get it added in. Let's add in the motion sensor. So the tab here, if I pull this out, it activates the battery QR codes here in the corner. If I go over to plus, scan QR code, picked up the device, confirm to add, pick the gateway, okay to that, select the location. We'll just leave the name as default. Naming the sub devices, we'll leave as is, save to that. Highlighting again that it needs the hub to work. Confirm that, use device now. And there you go, that's up and running now. Using the app, let's add the light switch in, click the plus, scan QR code, and the code's just over here on the plastic. Smart light switch, confirm to add. Select the gateway, okay to that. Select the room, we'll need the name the same. Sub device name will be the same as well. And again, it's highlighting, you need the hub for it to work. And there you go, it's added in. So you can see the two switches here. If I press the top button, there you go. Lights in the room have come on. And looking through the options you have, so the three dots there, standard stuff, you can rename it here and see details regarding the device back from here. Looking below, you can see all on, pressing that will turn on both the buttons. All off, same thing again, but turns them off. Timer, going in there, add timer. You can set a timer to either turn on or turn off. You've got a repeating option as well. So going in there, you can select every day, every weekday, weekend, and even there's a custom option as well. So if you wanted certain days, that's possible too. Back from here, back again, operation. So this is where you can say you want it to, one to turn on and then the other one to turn off, for instance, or both to turn on. Back from here, back again. Random timer, so you can set a timer for it to come on and off randomly during a certain period. And same thing again, you can say what days you want this to happen and on which switches you want it to happen on. Back from there, back again. Then you've got delay, so you can set a timer on the switch to turn it off. And that's it, that's all the options you have in this. All the devices are added in, and if I scroll down below, you can see them there. So from the smart hub downwards, and next to that, you can see a number, which is three. And if I click on that, it shows all the devices that have been added in via the hub. Obviously, as I've highlighted before, the hub has to be turned on and powered for it to allow the other devices to work. Now, with all the devices added in, this is where things can get interesting now. So I've got the remote here and a broad link bulb. So now if I go over to routines, we can create our own smart routine to get the remote controlling the bulb. Now, the remote only has a single action, which is single click. It doesn't have double click or long click options on there. So if I click add routine, when event triggers from, plus on that, device operated, smart button, button one. And this is what I mean. There's no other option other than just selecting the button. So just single click is available here. Done to that. Do actions, control certain device, loft bulb, and we're just going to have it turning on. So okay to that, save that. I'll accept a default name for this. And next I'll set up button two to turn off the bulb. That's set up now, I'll click save to that. So now if I press button one, light turns on, press button two, light turns off. How cool is that? You can just program in your own routines to do your smart things. Now you're not limited to just adding in a single thing to control. So if you had multiple devices, you can get multiple actions happening at the same time. If you were wondering if the smart button can trigger routines on the Amazon Echo, unfortunately they can't. So if I click on the plus, when this happens, smart home, you can see the buttons there. If I click button one, for instance, so it sees it as a motion sensor. And that's a bit of a shame if it did pick it up and you can activate a routine via the click, it would have taken the smart button to another level. So it can compete then with things like Flick. But it's not there at the moment, but I wouldn't be surprised at some point that will be introduced. Next, how about using the motion sensor? Similar thing again, click on the plus, device operated, motion sensor, human body sensor, when it detects someone, what you want to do is turn the light on, save to that. So now if I put my hand out in front of the sensor, there you go, light turns on. So you could have the sensor in your hallway to automatically turn the light on when you walk past. And you're not limited to having it going on all the time. So you can control it to only go on during a certain period. So if I go in there, click on under conditions and go for 
during specified period, you can select a period for it to actually go on. Back from there, and also when an action happens, you can get it sending a push notification to you as well. So you can be informed, for instance, if someone's entered a certain area. So if I click on do actions, push notification on phone, you can get a message popping up saying someone's say, for instance, in your porch area. Now here's another clever side of things. If you use IFTTT, you can actually program the buttons to control other devices. So I've got my Nano Leaf lights here and I've set it up. So if I press number three here, it will turn on. If I press four, it will turn off. So there you go, let's try it out. Turns on, press four, turns off. How cool is that? So you can integrate it with other devices using IFTTT. How about on the light switch, if you only had a single light, using the other button to control another device. So I've used IFTTT to control my Nano Leaf. So now if I turn it on, there you go. Press it again, turns off. How cool is that? So I love the fact it does work with IFTTT and you can control a number of different devices which aren't Broadlink with this. So in summary, an excellent selection of smart tech from Broadlink, which is a great addition to their existing range. Simple to set up and configure. Negatives wise, you need a stable internet connection for this to work as it uses cloud-based connectivity. Home Assistant can't control the light switch. And it's a shame the smart button can't trigger Amazon routine. So there you have it. You made it to the end of another video and a big thank you for watching. And I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing these products. Details for all the items I've shown today are in the description below, including purchasing links. If if you drop me a broad link in the comment and a like on the video i know you're still here supporting me and i'll give you a thumbs up if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video thanks for viewing and see you in the next one